the 2002 to 2003 season would see the San Antonio Spurs dominate the West. The Spurs would finish the regular season with a league's best of 60 to 22 record. Number two, 2003, Tim Duncan with the San Antonio Spurs. I don't vividly remember it, but I looked at those stat lines and Tim Duncan is the only player in finals history to lead his team in four stat categories in the finals. Let me tell you something about Tim Duncan and those damn Spurs. They have won all, all five of Tim Duncan's championships have came, minus probably the asterisk on that last one, because that was a hard fault finals against the Heat. Outside of those, the first one was a lockout year, so nobody was really ready. This was the second one against the Nets. Tim Duncan will win his second consecutive MVP award in the 02-03 season. Now known as the Big Fundamental, will be the front man for the Spurs, leading the San Antonio Spurs in points, rebounds, blocks, and field goal percentage throughout the regular season. Who did they play? The Knicks. Wasn't this the year that Shaquille O'Neal left the Lakers? Mm -hmm. So they didn't have to deal with the Lakers in the West? Mm-hmm. Ah. In the playoffs, the Spurs will beat the Suns, Lakers, and Mavericks on their way to the finals in a matchup against the New Jersey Nets. Okay. Um, you said uh, you said the center, no, the power forward at the time for New Jersey was Kenyon Martin, right? Ah. We just talked about the Nets. The Nets from 2000 to 2005 were that team that you love to see them in the regular season, but come playoffs time, it's up in the air. Wasn't one of the big things that we talked about degree of difficulty? Jason Kidd was, was, the, was the facilitator of his time. He was, but the East was deplorable. There was nobody in the East. Against the Spurs, we're talking a, a, a Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, all in their prime. To mention he had Tony Parker and Ginobili, they had you know, Bruce Bowen, a couple other guys, but that's still impressive for a power forward. When's the last time you seen a power forward lead the team in assists? During the final series against the Nets, Duncan averaged a team high of 44 minutes, 24 points, 17 rebounds, five blocks, and five assists per game. Look, I say this has to be on the list for the sheer amount of just stats and dominance defensively that Tim Duncan had in this finals. I don't think I can remember a defensive dominated finals more than I can remember this one. They they were the, I would say the quintessential big three because they played the game how it was meant to be played, which is through a team, through very strong fundamentals. If you want to think of, okay, what was the what was the NBA Finals performance in history that mainly was more defensive than offensive, the first one you go to is this San Antonio Spurs team, this Tim Duncan, this iteration of Tim Duncan where he was probably with Giannis is now. The trio of Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker would start off the Big Three era in the NBA. As the Spurs would go on to win a 4-2 series over the Nets. Tim Duncan and the Spurs will remain a high-level contender in the NBA over the next decade. And Duncan will finish his career with five NBA championships, three finals MVP awards, and Tim Duncan's time with the San Antonio Spurs would help mold the reputation of the Spurs, who are regarded as one of the greatest teams in the NBA history. Out of question, the unanimously known best defender in the league. There was a point where Tim Duncan had that for five years straight, and this was in the height of that. So I'm, I don't know if I like it this high. It wasn't just Tim Duncan, obviously. It was, a, it, you know, it was a team team victory you know everybody put in to win the championship but Tim's stat line was just 
so unique. You have to give him some credit. You got to put him somewhere in the top five. Maybe, maybe not two, but somewhere in the top five, you know. Top five, yeah. I'll give it top five. I don't know if I'll put it right here at two. I understand why it's this high on the list. Pass D Wade. Um. Nah, that's hard, man. That's hard. I like it better than D Wade. Cause I mean it was he actually had to score the points instead of shooting free throws. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attack D Wade anymore. The D Wade was one of my favorite players. They won it in a way that that really showcased team basketball. This is on the list for the sheer uniqueness. And I feel like I'm not just gonna have a heart attack because of how defensive minded this one was. Performance in the 2003 finals places him second on the spot on sports top 10 finals performances. 